Hello everyone and welcome to Edding Search Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. After seeing these images, I am sure that you have guessed today's topics. And yes, it is on applied anatomy. But what is important to note is that this is the third part of our basis of colorectal cancer surgery series. In the first two parts, we have discussed the right colon, the transverse colon, and the left colon, the D2, D3 lymphadenectomies, the different concepts of mesocolic excision. And today, we are going to focus on anatomy of rectum and relevant surgical concepts. Mind you, there is also going to be one or two more parts in this series where we will complete the entire colorectal applied anatomy topic. So when we talk of anatomical basis of rectum, one of the most important topic to discuss is to know the parts of rectum. What is upper rectum? What is lower rectum? Middle rectum? How are they defined differently? Why is there confusion? So we are going to clear this topic first. Then we will see the most important landmark that you need to know in rectum which is the middle rectal valve. Of course, you can't identify it in OT, but this is one landmark which helps define treatment options based on the location of tumors. And there are some landmarks that help you identify the position of middle rectal valve, which differentiate different parts of rectum. And we will see this in detail. We will see the surgical plane of rejection or the holy plane and here I would refer you back to the second part of this series, the video part two, where we have already discussed the colic, mesocolic excision, right? Now we are going to see mesorectal excision, which follows the same principles. We are going to see the anatomical basis of total mesorectal excision. We will devote a separate video to TME and now sparing concepts. Here we will only see the anatomical basis. So while going from colon to rectum, we have all seen in our basic anatomy classes that the tinea disappear in the rectum. Like there is merging of tinea libera, tinea mesocolica, and tinea omentalis. There are no hostrations in rectum. That is how you can identify this area. There are no appendices epiploica like in rest of the colon. And up to sacral two or three level that is up to the beginning of sacral hollow is the intraperitoneal portion of rectum. I'm going to use intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal repeatedly in this video because the entire treatment planning as well as surgical concepts are based on intraperitoneal rectum and extraperitoneal rectum. So these are the points that help you to identify the rectum from now, this figure is going to be discussed in a lot of detail when we discuss the anal canal anatomy. But for this video, what is important to know is the anal world, where the anal world is, right? So what you have to remember here is that all the distances, be it the puborectalis sling, which marks the end of the anal canal and the beginning of the rectum, you can see that it is 4 to 4.5 centimeters away from the anal verge. So most of the distances of tumors or the length of the rectum or the length of the anal canal or in anal canal, you will see the distance of dentate line, white line of Hilton. All these landmarks are labeled as distance from anal verge, right? So two important landmarks for rectum puborectalis sling, which you can palpate in per rectal examination by asking the patient to constrict the sphincter. So that is at 4 to 4.5 centimeter. And the middle rectal valve is at 8 centimeters from the anal bulge. So that is why this figure is discussed here. Of course, we will see it in detail in the next video. So now coming to the first part, which is the part of rectum. And this is one part which is very difficult to understand and it is given differently in different articles. So what we have done is we have divided the data into Japanese data and Western data. 
So if we see the Western data divides the rectum into upper rectum, middle rectum and lower rectum. Lower rectum is up to seven centimeters from anal walls. Middle rectum is seven to 11 centimeters from anal walls and upper rectum is 11 to 15 centimeters from anal walls. However, the Japanese people have divided it into only two parts. And if you see the total length of rectum in Japanese is short. This is because the Japanese people are short in height compared to Western population. However, when we see tumor articles, the low rectal tumors and the very, very low rectal tumors, we have to remember that the low rectal tumors are said to be low up to six centimeters from anal world. So basically it is two centimeters of the lower rectum which is above the puborectal is slim. This is the level where we have low rectal tumors. And very low rectal tumors are tumors whose age is one centimeter or less from the dentate line. So these are some of the very important measurements that you have to remember when you are dealing with a patient with rectal cancer. Most important one is low rectal tumors is up to six centimeters from anal walls, whereas lower rectum definition in Japanese is up to eight centimeters, Western is seven centimeters. So essentially it is six, seven, eight, right? Now going to the importance of middle rectal valve. Why is this important? And I will show this in an upcoming figure also. Like I said, middle rectal valve is eight to 10 centimeters from the anal walls or 4.5 to 5 centimeters from the puborectal sling or the anorectal junction. This point is important because this point marks the lowest point of anterior peritoneal reflection. What this means, we will see in an image on the upcoming slide. So let us see the image first. Here, you can see that this is the rectum, this is the urinary bladder, the peritoneum, goes up to the middle rectal valve and then it turns onto the urinary bladder. So this is the point where it turns in onto the urinary bladder. So what this means is that up to this point above, these are the tumors which are intraperitoneal rectal tumors. And this is the most important concept that you need to understand. I'll repeat. At the junction of middle rectal valve, or say eight to nine centimeters from the anal walls, the peritoneum reflects anteriorly from the rectum onto the urinary bladder. Above this level, the tumors will be covered by a peritoneum, and therefore they are intraperitoneal tumors. Hence, below this level, this area, there is no peritoneum there is no peritoneum, okay? And this is the area which are extra peritoneal rectal tumors. Now, this is very important to understand because your treatment options, your anastomosis, many of your decisions are going to be based on this intraperitoneal and extra peritoneal location of rectal tumors. So, Tumors above the middle rectal valve or tumors above the anterior peritoneal reflection are intraperitoneal tumors and tumors below the anterior peritoneal reflection are extraperitoneal tumors. One of the points that is highlighted here is that intraperitoneal tumors do not need neoadjuvant radiation. So this is one very important clinical decision-making point that intraperitoneal tumors do not need preoperative radiation. Now coming to the topic of mesorectum. What is mesorectum? So this video is going in a sequence that will give you all the concepts very easily. Right? So we have seen what is intraperitoneal part of rectum and what is the extraperitoneal part of rectum. What is mesorectum? Mesorectum is the mesentery of rectum covering only the extraperitoneal part of rectum. I repeat, the extraperitoneal part of rectum has a mesentery which is basically known as mesorectum. Right? It contains all the vessels, nodes 
and stuff of that extra peritoneal part of rectum. So now it's easy to remember. As you come from colon to rectum, you have the intraperitoneal part of rectum, which does not have a mesorectum, and the extraperitoneal part of rectum, which has a mesorectum. So whenever we discuss concepts like total mesorectal excision, we are discussing this extraperitoneal portion of rectum, which begins at the level of 10 centimeters from anal verge approximately and ends at levator ani. Right. So mesorectum is a part of extraperitoneal rectum which extends from middle rectal valve to levator ani. So just like complete mesocolic excision, we have to identify the correct plane. And this correct, correct plane is formed by the fusion fascia of TOLT. What happens is that when the organs become retroperitonealized, the posterior layer of mesentery fuses with the retroperitoneum. Okay. So when we dissect, we have to take the inferior mesenteric artery pedicle, but we have to protect the nerves. And we will see this in detail in the TME video. But just to make you understand the anatomical basis, when the sigmoid attaches to the retroperitoneum, at this area, the posterior layer of mesentery is weakly fused to the retroperitoneal layer, which is superficial and deep subperitoneal fascia. So once we enter this plane, this is a dead space. And this plane can be opened very easily as it is a natural plane, right? So what we have to do is we have to take the plane just below the inferior mesenteric artery, but above the superior hypogastric plexus, which you can see here. So once you enter this plane, this part of the colon or rectum can be very easily lifted. So that is the concept of complete mesorectal or mesocolic excision, right? So now having seen all the different concepts like the inner world, intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal rectum, as well as mesorectum, this is the right time to understand anatomically what is TME or total mesorectal excision. So this was first given by Bill Hill in UK in 1982. And the components are that it has to be in the correct plane, the plane that we saw previously. It is known as between the visceral and the parietal endopelvic fascia of rectum. The dissection has to be sharp and direct vision. Like I said, the artery will be anterior and the nose will be posterior. And this is known as the holy plane of field. Remove the complete mesorectum with unbreached fascia. And there is a Twinkies scoring system for intactness of surgery, which we will see in the surgery video. And you have to do high ligation of inframesentric artery and inframesentric vein while safeguarding the hypogastric now plexus. Distal margin now is one centimeter and the circumferential rejection margin of one mm is required. The staple line on the rectum should be horizontal and at the same level at bowel and mesentery. Again, this is a technical point. What happens is because of the obliquity of pelvis, when we insert the stapler, there is high probability that the staple is fired at an angle. What that leads to is that the mesentery is cut at a lower end and the rectum is cut at an upper end due to oblique stapler and that can lead to leaks. That is why it is said that staple line should be horizontal and at the same level in bowel and mesentery. So these are the key components that you need to remember. Plane should be correct, high ligation of vessels, sharp dissection, distal margin, intact mesorectum and horizontal staple line. He'll propose these concepts so as to reduce the incidence of bladder and sexual dysfunction as a side effect, but to have low CRM positivity and low conversions into abdominoperineal excision. Remember that this was 1982 when chemo radiation in the preoperative setting was not very known. And even then, Bill Hill reported amazing outcomes with the concept of total mesorectal excision, which is followed even now. Approaches to TME, this we will be seeing in detail in the TME video and now sparing techniques. But 
we know that it can be open surgery it can be laparoscopic it can be laparoscopic with open it can be robotic robotic laparoscopic robotic open which are known as hybrid surgery techniques and it can be transanal tme which is the nuclear in the block so after what all we have discussed we know that there is an upper middle and lower rectum for upper third of the rectum it is very simple that the surgical option is anterior resection and this anastomosis is to the peritonealized part of rectum or the intraperitoneal rectum that is it is above the middle rectal wall middle third of rectum is low anterior resection and here the anastomosis is below the middle rectal wall and that is to extraperitoneal rectum but above the anorectal rib lower third of rectum is going to be a part that is to be discussed in continuity with the next video but just to show how this is planned the lower third rectum and the anal canal cancer surgery depends on the rulier and now the upcoming modified rulier classification we are going to see only the 1a and 1b of modified rulier classification in this video because they relate to the lower third of rectum so what is the concept in this rulier classification is they see the lower limit of the tumor okay they see the lower limit of the tumor in relation to next anatomical landmark right so like we had told you the low rectal tumors are tumors which are up to 6 cm from anal verge right so this tumor is beyond 6 cm of the anal verge so it is 2 cm and above the rectum and in these cases you can do low anterior resection however when the tumor is within 6 cm it is within 2 cm of the anorectal junction or 6 cm of the anal walls but you have a 1 cm margin like i told you you need a distal 1 cm margin and a crm of 1 mm so here to get 1 cm margin you will have to cut at the level of anorectal junction right you will have to cut at the level of anorectal junction and so your anastomosis in this will be a colo anal anastomosis okay where you have options of doing a j pouch or you have an option of doing an end to end or side to end anastomosis again surgical complexities arise in this area which we will discuss in a dedicated surgical discussion video on ultra low anterior resection and now sparing right just for sake of this video anatomically you have to remember that when the tumor is within 2 cm but you can leave a sleeve of 1 cm of extra peritoneal rectum it is low anterior resection when the tumor is up to 2 cm and beyond but more than 1 cm above the anorectal junction or the puborectal is slim you divide the rectum at the anorectal junction which is marked by the blue arrows and your anastomosis will be a colo anal anastomosis which some people do from the perineal side in an hands on way or using a circular stapler so these are type 1a and 1b of modified rulier classification the other types and in the intersphincteric and the abdominal perineal ha on rectum anatomy we will see in the next video and we will have separate video on anterior resection and now sparing techniques so that is what we are going to discuss in part 4 most important part in this video like i have said you have to remember the intraperitoneal rectal tumors or tumors which are above the peritoneal reflection you don't need to give near joint chemo radiation tumors below at the extra peritoneal rectal tumors which have the mesorectum and where you need the total mesorectal excision low rectal tumors are within 6 cm of anal verge and the planning relies heavily on modified rulier classification thank you